Welcome to part two of my brush lettering course. In this segment we will be beginning to learn how to use a brush pen to achieve thick and thin lines. This is following on from part one, the introduction, which can be found on YouTube. The link for the downloadable worksheets can be found in the description below. If you like this video, please do hit the subscribe button and please do comment with any questions that you may have. Now don't forget this workshop was filmed as a live stream so some of the chat may seem a little bit random um, but hopefully you'll get the gist and I've split the entire two hour workshop into easy segments for you to dip in and out of as you wish. Now we've got this sheet um, that I've given you to print off but like I said if you haven't printed it off don't worry. Now I've got thick and thin lines on here, but I've given you all of these strokes anyway. You can print this off as many times as you like to do your practicing. And I would definitely say, if you were to practice this once a day, just do the sheet once a day, and you can go over the gray and then you continue onto the white. Once a day for a week, you'll find after a week already you'll start to improve. And when I say improve, I mean being less shaky on those thin strokes and much more confident transferring from a thin stroke into a thicker stroke. So I'm going to start working through these together. Now on the sheet, I've given you some arrows, just in case you're completely stuck as to which direction you're going. Um, so we'll start at the very top with the fine one. Now with any brush pen, they are 360 degrees. That means you can spin it round in a circle, okay? We can get a very, very fine point from any angle and we can get a nice thick point. We usually get the thicker point by in two ways. Let me just bring in a spare sheet of paper. Where's my one I was just using? So in case you're not sure how they work, very much like a calligraphy dip pen, when you press down, of course the tines open up on a, a calligraphy nib, but with this, the brush pen bends. So we get nice thin strokes by applying very light pressure with just the tip. But when we want a thicker stroke, can you see how that tip is bending? And we really do press down hard, okay? Now you can't break your brush pens. The most damage you can do to them is by using incorrect paper or pressing really hard all the time and not giving it chance to sort of bounce back. And at that point, that's where sometimes the, um, the fibers eventually will fray. It happens, and it does happen with all pens. I've got probably some of my Tombows, looking at these now, I've had these a couple of years even, and some of these will start to fray eventually. So, um, you know, no pen is indestructible, but you can't damage it by doing your basic writing um, just with one stroke by any means. So let's have a go at, first of all, these thin strokes. Now, these are first and these are the ones that you're going to struggle with the most. And I hate to be uh, giving out pessimistic um, thoughts straight away, but for most people, these are the ones that you really struggle with. And it takes me, even though I've been doing brush lettering for years now, it takes me a while to get into the flow of doing the thin strokes. Now, the best way I've found of teaching is the same way as I've actually taught my son, because he, he thinks of th the silly little things to say. So I'll try to remember all those things and relay them to you because they're probably things you're thinking and maybe too embarrassed to ask. Uh, so when you're doing your thin strokes, now it's best to, it, the temptation is to go really fast, okay? Is to use just the tip of your pen, go really fast, but you lose control and you want to be controlled. You want to not be shaky. Uh, that will just come with confidence and that will also be, come with being used to not pressing on the paper. Now, if you imagine when you're using uh, any other pen, let me see if I've got one, here's one. So this is like a bullet point pen, this one. Uh, when I'm writing with this, whether I'm writing uh, with light pressure or hard pressure, I can put pressure on there and lean into the pen and that steadies my hand. When you're doing light pressure on these strokes, you've got nothing to steady your hand because you're almost hovering over the edge okay if you want to rest your arm let me just bring you back to the other view so you can see what I'm doing so I do turn my paper to a slight angle this is just my preference um, and I do I am right-handed if you're left-handed don't worry there's not too much difference you will still have the same technique you just may hold your pen slightly um, differently and you may find occasionally you smudge the ink okay but 
I tend to have my paper to a slight angle. My pen is not coming from above, so I'm not trying to do it this way, although you get a nice thin stroke, because when you're doing it from underneath, okay, when we come to do our thick strokes, we can't get the angle on the pen to get a thick stroke. That's not thick enough. You'll see that in a moment when we come to that. So I tend to have my pen at a 45 degree angle to the stroke that I'm doing as well. So if that, that's the um, line down the middle of the paper, you want to hold your pen at roughly a 45 degree angle to that there. Hopefully you're getting that, okay? And then another angle, whoop, I need to bring you over to the other camera to show you this angle, another 45 degree angle, and that's the one between the paper and your pen here okay so you've got two 45 degree angles to look for now i don't want to stop you writing in the most comfortable way possible so however you're most comfortable writing that's how you almost want to hold your pen you just might find you need to make a couple of small adjustments that's all and they we may find later if you're saying that i'm really having struggling with not getting my thick strokes it could be the angle you're holding your pen coming to thick strokes because this is where people sometimes get confused why is my pen not giving me the thick stroke that I want and like I say if your arm is almost running parallel to that center line down your paper when you press your pen nib down I'm hoping let's bring that out so it's a bit more in focus for you uh, can you see basically your nib is running over the ink that it's just made so we're not going to get a nice thick stroke what we want to do is if you hold your pen at that 45 degree angle, we're putting the side of the pen down and dragging it sideways, okay? And then you get a really thick line. You'll have different size nibs, all of you. You may find that you're not able to achieve the thick lines that are printed on here with the pen you've got. You may find you're actually getting even thicker ones because you've got a really big chunky pen. So for example, I've got um, the Winsor & Newton brush markers. These are lovely, but if you look at the size of the nib, okay, I'm going to get really thick lines with this one. So I'm not going to be using that one, thank you. <laughs> Actually, that's an alcohol pen. That's a bit smelly, that one. So um, practice your thick lines. So really the, the trick with the thin lines is the pressure. Trying to keep steady while you keep that light pressure. The thick lines is definitely all about the angle. And once you've got that angle, it's quite easy to move along um, so when we're writing a letter don't worry if you're up strokes you hold your pen in one place and your down strokes you adjust your hand slightly because we can stop and start between letters and we can stop and start halfway through a letter so for example if I want to do an A I might say right there's the first bit that's a nice thin one okay now adjust myself let's bring you more in view now I'm going to stop, I'm going to adjust myself. Now I'm going to do my thick stroke. Okay, I'm going to just adjust myself, get comfortable. Now I'm going to come up and do my thin stroke. And then I'm going to adjust myself. And this is really strange adjusting, but you know, you can do it. And I'm going to do my thick stroke and then I'm going to do my thin. And you can build up like that and you can gradually go through. Uh, eventually you'll do each letter, even words without lifting your pen off the paper, but you absolutely can do it step by step like that if you wish. That's bugging me that I've got not got a straight line there, so I'm just going to adjust those, even though it's a practice sheet. So we've got our thin strokes and we've got our thick strokes. These make up the basis. And once you think you've started to get the angles for those, we can start working through these shapes. Now these are just transferring from thin to thick, to thin to thick. Now what you want to do is actually start lessening or um, applying more pressure through the stroke before you get to the bottom. So I'm hoping you'll be able to see this. So I'm going to do a thin stroke on this one and here I'm going to cut, start coming over the curve and I'm gradually going to deepen the pressure as I go into the thick stroke. Now as I get towards the bottom about six eight six eight that's ridiculous three quarters of the way down i'm then going to start lifting up my pressure so um, by the time i get to the very base of the curve i'm already um, at light pressure okay and then light pressure up the top and then as i get to the top of the curve i start applying my pressure down again 
three quarters of the way, start thinking about lightening up your pressure. And the easiest way to do this is to take it very, very slowly. This is where the stage where people start rushing because the thick and the thin, wow, you've got that, you've done, you know, you can do thick and thin, you can do this. It's that, that um, transferring from one to the other that starts to stumble people. Just take it extremely slowly. No one's going to watch you brush letter, okay? No one's going to sit and watch you lettering, certainly at the, in the beginning, at least, unless you start producing videos and things. Um, so it doesn't matter how long these take you, okay? They can take you all day to write one word, as long as you end up doing it correctly, okay? So as you can see, you'll gradually build up your confidence and the thick, thin, thick, thin will just start to come naturally and you'll start knowing where to transfer. Okay, now one thing my son was doing, which I need to mention actually, is when he was creating thin lines, he'd get to the end, so he'd start going up, he'd get to the end, he'd get his confidence and he'd flick. And very often, this flick would cause a thicker line, because as you flick to the end, you apply, you don't realise you apply more pressure. So you need to keep it really controlled all the way to keep that thin line all the time. Okay, so wh whenever you're doing words letters shapes don't flick at the end keep it nice and controlled to the very very end okay um i hate that there's so many rules i love to say i mean it is relaxing trust me once you start practicing it's really relaxing now with the o the the um arrow has been put on here incorrectly this was done for a worksheet for someone else and they put the arrows on for me so it does show you the direction we're going. We're going in an anti-clockwise direction, but with an O, I tend to start at the top where it's very thin. So we're still practicing that gradual going down into the thick and then coming up into the thin and then joining. An O will be another stumbling block for people, okay? This is another one that people find quite difficult. And even myself, some of my O's, see that wasn't a perfect, um, transfer between thick and thin but you can go and touch touch it up afterwards that's fine you can go and add in if you need to fill in any little areas thicken a bit up you can do uh, so certainly the curves and the o's if you don't have a lot of time to practice the curves and the o's are certainly two that i would suggest you practice on a daily basis if you can if you're really um, really adamant you want to learn brush lettering and do it in a quick time now because it's it is muscle memory you need to do it reasonably regularly um, and I promise you doing it regularly you will get better sometimes it will seem like uh, you're not getting anywhere give it a week and compare to what you were doing at the beginning give it two weeks compare again and you'll be blown away I promise you um, so the only other stroke we've got here because they are repeated at the bottom are thin to thick where we're actually physically stopping and doing a nice thick line. Now this happens as well in some letters, so it's just a nice one to practice, just adjusting your pen, because I find I do hold my pen slightly differently for each. I hold my pen slightly more upright for my thin strokes, and I lay it down a bit more. I do hold my pen strange, by the way. I don't know if anyone sort of looks at me and thinks, mm, I don't want to say, but she is. Um, I do hold my pen unusually. Um, I'll pop back to the other view. This was never picked up in primary school. Um, I lean my, you can see the ink on there. I lean my pen on my finger there like that, a bit like a chopstick maybe, I don't know. Uh, I know most people will hold their pen like this. It doesn't have any effect on your brush lettering ability, okay? But um, it's just, just how I do it. Just, just imagine rather than being there, my fingers are there. Um, you can hold the pen however you feel most comfortable and sit how you're comfortable. Some calligraphers will say you need to sit at a certain angle, you need to have your paper at a certain angle. You don't. I will tell you how I find it more comfortable, but please do just be comfortable. The last thing you want to do is be getting an aching arm, neck, wrist or anything. Um, if you are starting to get an aching hand, just stop and watch and come back later and practice that little bit. Don't worry, you know. There's no pressure, no stress. This should be relaxing. In part three, we will be looking at forming letters and different ways to do so. There are more worksheets to download for part three and they are linked below. And I'll be uploading this video very soon if it's not there already. 
Until then, keep practicing your basic strokes and I promise you will soon see an improvement in the smoothness and the contrast between your thick and thin lines.